Solar Nightly News was able to interview Interior Undersecretary Rico Puno the day President Aquino accepted his resignation. Here's an excerpt of that interview. On the allegations that you went to the late Secretary Robredo's condominium to secure certain documents, you said that you went there on the orders of President Aquino. Just to take a step back, help us understand the usual protocol or um, standard operating procedure if a public official, in this case it's a cabinet official, would go missing or perhaps passes away. Is there an, an automatic mechanism that, uh, that kicks in where in the department we already know that they need to secure all sensitive documents in all probable locations. On a personal <clears throat> note, were you surprised that it had to come from the president to call you personally to ask you to secure Secretary Robredo's uh, sensitive documents? I think that's a standard operating procedure that uh, there should be a lockdown of all the offices whenever uh, especially a cabinet secretary has gone missing. You know? The, the order of the president was, uh, was, uh, was called, uh, the president himself called me when I was about to board the plane. And he told me that uh, there should be a secure all valuable documents and the uh, private offices of the late secretary. At any point during that time, during that instance, did you feel that the president was particularly interested in any specific documents? No, I don't think so. Uh, he just said that there are certain, uh, there are several sensitive documents in the office of the secretary at the time that uh, it should be secured. And he did not let on yes, about I, what these sensitive documents might be? No, he did not uh, specify which documents because I do not have any access before there and I do not know where to look. So. Uh, we just have to lock down the, all the offices of the secretary. And at any, yeah. any moment uh, during that time, you never felt that uh, anything was uh, peculiar about the president having to call you to, to no, he usually to uh, He always the... calls me and everything that uh, if there is something uh, confidential, in ma in, especially uh, in matters of security. All right. Your chronology has been widely reported on yeah. already. What perhaps cannot be explained by the chronology is the parallel efforts of Justice Secretary Laila de Lima to, on her own, also secure uh, these documents in the same location in that condominium. And it seems that she had more of the blessings and perhaps uh, Secretary Robredo's uh, widow, Lenny Robredo, even sought her help. How does that make you feel uh, that there were parallel efforts no, I to don't yours? think it was more, it's not more, uh, it's not a parallel effort. I thought it was just uh, because she was with the presidential security group at the time when she arrived. And it was just to check and to double check. And in fact, when, <coughs> when, she, was, um, when she was at the uh, late secretary's office at, uh, in the, uh, Francisco Gold, he even uh, locked down some of the other offices, especially of the lawyers and the uh, chief of staff of the late secretary. All right. And do we have... <laughs> Uh, any confirmation <coughs> as to who sent Secretary Laila de Lima to the condominium? Do I, we know who I have no idea. I assume that uh, it was from the president because she was with the, uh, with the presidential security group at the time. All right. Tell us more about uh, the timeline then. Um, um, the, you pointed at the media as the source of these quote-unquote allegations that uh, there was the word raid was used, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you maintain uh, that these reports are unverified? What part of these reports would you consider verifiable at this point? Take us to the storyline well, again. It's just that uh, when, after we have done the uh, total lockdown and secured most of the, uh, the documents in the offices of the sec late secretary and plus the documents in this condominium, uh, there were already allegations that uh, we have uh, ransacked some of the offices and we have raided the house of uh, the condominium unit of the late secretary. So I just uh, sat, sat and, uh, and just kept, kept quiet that uh, I knew that uh, these are all publications. So in, uh, when I waited for the, uh, the official statement of the president that he ordered me to do all of these things and and uh, Superintendent Tanseco came out uh, in the uh, dailies also and, we, and was interviewed that uh, 
there was no lockdown, uh, there was no ransacking or uh, raiding of the places. And this was confirmed by the other security officers who were with us and in almost all of the other uh, uh, offices of the late secretary. You must remember, Nancy, that uh, the, most of the people that were used in order to secure and lock down the, uh, the offices of the late secretary were all under his office. All right. Which is under Let, the, let's be specific. Let's try to get more familiar with the persons who actually accompanied you to to Secretary Roberto's condominio. If you mentioned already, of course, we know that Superintendent Oliver Tanseco was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, take us through the names of the persons who were with you and who were closer to you and closer to the late Secretary Roberto. No, it was uh, uh, the only person that was closer to me was my aide, uh, Chief Inspector Togonon. And uh, the other person that were assigned by the chief PNP to, to, uh, to help in securing also was uh, Senior Superintendent Joel Pagdirao, who is the Deputy Director of the, uh, uh, of the Central Police District. And then there is also the Deputy for Operations then for the Southern Police District, uh, which was sent by Chief Superintendent Stepona at the time, in order to augment the... Uh, the uh, the, uh, the officers that were under the late secretary's office. On the allegations that you went to the late secretary Roberto's condominium to...